Lord Turbo 51 over here! I hope you're having a splendid day wherever you are in the world. And guys, the thing you guys have been waiting for for about two weeks now, the weeks now, is finally back on the channel. We are ending our F1 2019 Season 3 of Career Mode at McLaren. We have now got a maxed out engine. We are the fastest car on the grid when it comes to engine power. We've still got a lot of chassis parts to adapt. One chassis part still incoming and a lot of aero parts to adapt. But without further ado, guys, let's head straight to the performance shot. We have got ourselves in McLaren with our new engine upgrade being now the fastest car on the grid. Racing Point P2, Red Bull P3, Haas P4, Ferrari is in P5, Mercedes P6, Renault P7, Williams P8, Alfa Romeo Racing P9, and Scuderia Toro Rosso are in P10. Now, guys, we've only got five rounds to go for this championship. It is heating up. It is only me and Lucas Weber who are still within a chance of winning this championship. Nobody can touch us. And it's still a fight between McLaren and Racing Point for the Constructors Championship. Now, you guys can see I was so stressed when I started this, this, this weekend's practice. I literally span as I came out of the pit lane. Look, looky, looky, looky. There we go. Yeah. The stress is getting to be my 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 booty is doing that you know that bite thing you know like it, it, it it's the stress levels yeah it's doing that so um this weekend we have to come away with a good result but as you guys know japan is the track on the f1 2019 game where the ai are the most op so we are gonna have a tough weekend ahead of us but we're gonna face it head on like usual guys please drop a like down below on the video it's only gonna take you two seconds as we hit straight into qualifying Welcome to the only figure of eight track on the F1 calendar. We're here at Suzuka for qualifying today ahead of the Japanese Grand Prix. It always looked like the kind of track that asks an awful lot of the rear tyres, such as the frequency of low speed exits. No matter how good a driver is at managing their throttle application to limit rear slip, they can't always overcome a car that's inherently bad at looking after its rear tyres. Here we have a lot of low speed corner exits, which means a whole load of energy, heat and tyre wear. Jumping straight to the end of Q1 guys as we head through 130R at max, well max speed, foot to the floor. I, I wanted to say something there and I just realised before I said it, it was going to sound very stupid. But in any case, through the final chicane, we have that little dip uh, through the final corner across the line and we get ourselves up into P2. Very good Q1 from us. I'm Lucas over tops Q1 with my teammate Devin Butler in P3. Out of Q1 is Kimi Raikkonen, Roman Grosjean, Antonio Giovinazzi, Danny Kvyat, and Alexander Albin. Now jumping straight to the end of Q2, guys. Um, yeah, Q2 was very... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it not, not, I, I almost said unsatisfying. It's not what I was going for. But there was, a, there was not a lot of action. Good lap here, or we're out of qualifying. You don't say, Jeff, you don't say. Oi vey. Guys, we open up the RS, we come across the line, and we get ourselves into Q3 with a 1 minute 25.2, but we only scrape through. It's clear that Racing Point Ferrari, Red Bull, and my teammate have found a lot more pace in Q2. Magnus and Sainz, Ricardo, Norris and Russell are the ones out in Q2. Heading into Q3, guys, you guys can see that I was actually hindered a lot on my lap by wonderful Mr. Charles Leclerc. And I'm, ooh, as I nearly put the car into the pit wall there. Ooh. Okay, we can take you this lap. Rain is forecast in just over 10 minutes time. Rain in 10 minutes. Dry seem like the best tire for now. Guys, that changes everything. I went straight into the pit lane, strapped on a new set of softs and went out immediately because I was not going to take any chances with maybe the rain hitting a little earlier. You guys can see it's already very doom and gloomy. So let's go around this beautiful figure of a track on the F1 calendar in Japan. As we head through into the S section, guys, one of the most satisfying S sections in the world. It's not quite maggots and beckets back at Silverstone, but it is still a beautiful place to go through. If you take the perfect line through the final one, you can take it full kettle. Heading to this next part, into the kick, 
Just down gear once, throw the car in, bounce it over the curb as you have a beautiful replay shot here through the next right hander underneath the bridge as you go into the famous Suzuka hairpin. Through the right hander, braking hard into the hairpin. Watch out not to lock up the brakes. Through this, we plant power as we come out of the corner. Now we head down this basically this constant right hander as we go into spoon. You get the car all the way up into eighth gear. Hot lap on the ERS. Down to 5th gear, 6th gear, 5th gear, bounce the car over the inside curb, inside, outside, inside, plant the power as early as you as you dare to come out of spoon, hug the inside because the, the track tends to turn to the left hand side, then coming up the hill, heading up to 130R, keep the car in overtake mode as you barrel down this part, hug the inside through 130R, it does get you a few, a, a, well, maybe half a tenth of a second if you take it perfectly. Through the final chicane, we plant the power on the way out, we take the little dip, have a little kick of oversteer, open up DRS, and we are in P10! With four tits! Here's the top five cars as things stand. Weber, Butler, Perez, Gasly, and Hamilton. Okay, so as for the cars around us, just ahead are Vettel, Leclerc, and Bottas. And behind us are the fastest lap at this point in time is a 124.7. We're all ready for tomorrow's race, but before we begin, let's have a quick look at those who will be fronting the grid. Weber, Verstappen, and Charles Leclerc. With qualifying wrapped up, we now have our grid lineup for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Tough luck there. It's not quite where we'd want to be on the grid, but chin up, it's not the end of the world. P10! The whole top 10 was separated by was separated by less than half a second. That is a steal! And a very warm welcome to the Japanese Grand Prix. An event that has decided a driver's championship 11 times over the years and has hosted some very memorable races as well. Who can forget Kimi Raikkonen's win from 17th on the grid in 2005 or Kamui Kobayashi's incredible drive to a podium in 2012. A lap of this historic racetrack covers 3.6 miles and it's the only time during the season that we race on a figure of eight racetrack. The drivers can expect some intense g-forces through the 18 corners on offer here as they experience some of the highest average apex speeds on the Formula One calendar and keep an eye out for overtakes going into the final chicane. Anthony Davidson, a very warm welcome to you as you join me in the commentary box for today's event. Let's talk about O'Connor. What do you make of their performance so far this season? It's been a really solid year so far. There have been some incredible standout performances, but what's really impressed me has been the consistency. With this kind of form, I'm expecting another great race today. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lucas Weber lines up on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Butler, Gasly, Sergio Perez, and Vettel, Hamilton, Bottas, O'Connor, and Kevin Magnussen, Sainz, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Norris, Russell, Raikkonen, Roman Grosjean and Antonio Giovinazzi, Fiat, and Alexander Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Okay, we have five races till the end of the season, and we're still in with a chance of taking the Constructors' Championship. Good luck. Guys, you know you want to hit the subscribe down below and ding that bell if you're new to the channel. Why would you not want to watch this awesome content? Guys, I feel it was broad day, broad daylight robbery to be sitting in P10. Thanks to a penalty at, on, in the Ferrari garage for Max Verstappen, we're starting P9. But this is not making our job easy for this championship. So, um, like I said, the nerves are there. The butt is clenching. But it's crunch time with five rounds to go. Jam with me on the formation lap. Oh, yeah.
are you guys ready for the Japanese Grand Prix as we head to five red lights and it's go 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 for the Japanese Grand Prix Lucas Weber Charles Leclerc on the front row Charles Leclerc gets a blisteringly quick start in that Ferrari Lucas Weber tries to defend from Pierre Gasly in P2 well in P3 he does the defensive move very good there but it is Charles Leclerc who has taken the lead away from Lucas Weber who leads this Japanese Grand Prix Pierre Gasly is in P3 with my teammate Devin Butler P4 Sebastian Vettel in the other Red Bull is fighting away with Sergio Perez for P5. This is just for bragging rights. The number 5 v the number 11 car as we head through the final S here at Suzuka for the first lap. Vettel gets the jump on Sergio Perez and right behind them. Oh, well, there's actually a few cars there with myself. I think it's the, the two Mercedes as well. We jump back to my POV for my start, guys. A very, very, I would say, good timing of the lights. But as you guys know, the cars bog heavily in, in, from second to fourth gear. But we still have a good start. We actually get squeezed onto the outside by the one of the Mercedes here. That is Bottas. And right ahead of us is Lewis Hamilton in the second Mercedes. We get shoved onto the outside. We have to force our way to the inside and give Bottas a little bit of a, of a pinch there. We are right behind Lewis Hamilton as he is has got a, the best seat in the house to watch Vettel and Perez strapping away for P5. So you guys see that's P5, 6, 7. We are now up into P8. Here we go. Hamilton is, is held up by the racing points and the Red Bull fighting very hard. I tried to go for the move on the outside of the kink. Hamilton goes deep. We dummy to the inside. Beautiful switch back. And that is us now up into P7. And I need to try and hold on to that racing point and that Red Bull. If I want any hope of doing good in this Grand Prix. Hamilton has a little bit of a lunge up my inside. But I get the exit in this very, very good McLaren. Guys, I still can't believe this is now the best car on the grid, according to paper. But when this season started, we were the worst car on the grid. Okay, the second to us. Toro Rosso is still there. But basically, we were a back, a solid back marker. And now we are fighting for the drivers and the Constructors' Championship. Crazy stuff happening on this F1 2019 game. Guys, as we head to the end of lap one. Charles Leclerc is still leading the way from Lucas Weber in P2, who is my championship rival. For those of you guys, that, if it's the first time watching, yeah, five rounds to go. Weber v Turbo, it's going to get nutty. As you guys see, we head on to the end of lap four, and this is my teammate Lucas Weber trying... Oh, Lucas Weber. <laughs> Devin Butler trying to make a move on Pierre Gasly to get himself onto the podium. He goes to the inside. It's a very tight pitch. This contact! Crazy contact between Gasly and Butler. Butler's got a broken front wing. There's a racing point also off there. That's Perez. It's a broken front wing for my, for te my teammate Butler and for Perez. Butler is in the gravel. Perez is around. What happened? Okay, obviously Butler and Gasly collided and it spun Butler. But what happened between Perez and Vettel? A carbon copy. So the two Red Bulls are out to murder today. Not really. That was just unlucky that it was both the Red Bulls caught up in those incidents. But that is very bad news for Butler and Perez. And that is basically their race over. It is now, when it comes to the Constructors fight, it is myself and Weber flying the flag for our teams. But Charles Leclerc makes a massive mistake heading into the first two corners. And now Lucas Weber is leading the Japanese Grand Prix. So we are now not just fighting for our own driver's championship. We are both also fighting for our teams. Thanks to Butler and Perez having a little bit of a moment there in the first corner with two, with two, with, 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 with the two Red Bulls. Charles Leclerc the following lap takes the lead of the Japanese Grand Prix back from Lucas Weber. But now here comes Weber once again. It is a slipstream fest here at Suzuka as we look at the battle for the lead which is intensifying by the lap. Heading into the first quarter. Luckily, Weber gets ahead of Leclerc. He doesn't want to suffer the same fate as his teammate Sergio Perez. We quickly rewind a bit back onto my POV guys. This is now Mr. Sebastian Vettel ahead of me. Through 130R, I went for the inside dummy. Well, I dummy to the inside, went to the outside. Vettel still had a very good um, foot on the brake pedal. But heading onto the main straight, we will have DRS. And it's now a drag race to the first quarter. But Vettel will be able to do nothing thanks to the power of the McLaren and the DRS. We come to the end of lap 7, guys. And already I am going for a very aggressive two-stop off of the first set of, of soft tires onto the second set. And then we will end this race on the mediums. Like I said, we are the only McLaren now flying the flag for McLaren. And here we go. Beautiful pit stop there from the boys in, in orange, blue and black. And here we come out. Now. Guys, I think we're going to come out in P20. Or actually not. We're going to come out, with, I think, in between our teammate and Sergio Perez. We're we doing one more stop today. One stop left in our strategy. 
Thank you very much, Jeff. We just come out ahead of Sergio Perez, and we're going to have to make quick work of our teammate, Devin Butler. As we head to the end of that lap, guys, we get to Spoon Curve, and I've already closed up right onto the rear end of my teammate. Remember, Heb and Perez have got front wing damage, so they do, do not have the downforce that we have in the corners, and now we're also on fresher rubber. Through 130R, we take to the inside, and that is us now up into P18. And here we go, you guys can see, just going on to the, the, literally the middle of the next lap. We have already caught up to the, to the rear end of one of the Toro Rossos. I think this is Mr. Alexander Alban heading into Spoon Curve. Alex just doesn't give me the room at all, and there's contact, and Alex Alban is round. Guys, I'm not going to take responsibility for that. He didn't, he, he should have backed out of that, and he didn't. He just kept his nose in there, and he cost himself a very good solid race position here, because he was in a fight with all these guys. Now I'm right behind Roman Grosjean as we head through 130R. Beautiful jolt to the outside. We are good onto the brakes, but Roman is a bit better actually. Guys, I was quite hesitant on the brakes heading into the final chicane because I was really trying to optimize my exit every single time. And if you brake late into that corner and you go wide, you really compromise yourself all the way down this straight as well. We get past Roman Grosjean quite easily heading into the first corner. And next, oh, there's a Williams there in the gravel trap. It is really popping off here in um, Suzuka. Here we have the race leader now, Lucas Weber, diving it into the pit lane to for his first of two pit stops or his first and only pit stop. Let's look. Guys, Lucas Weber is doing exactly the same as myself, going for a two-stop strategy. Very aggressive, soft, soft, medium. Here we have a replay of the Williams of George Russell, who is going side by side with his teammate, Lando Norris. And once again, it's a crazy, crazy time here in the first corner at Suzuka. We have had now a McLaren, a racing point and a Williams being being bitten as hard as possible. Here we come with Charles Leclerc as he dives in, into the pit lane. I think this is lap 10, guys. He is going from the softs to the mediums. I'm not sure if that's a one-stop or a two-stop. At the beginning of the race, before we started, there was the option of a one-stop from softs to mediums. But that's a little bit of a stretch, in my opinion. That's why I went for the aggressive two-stops the aggressive two stop because also the hearts around here are absolutely useless we're rewinding quite a fair bit back guys we go up the inside of Danny Kvyat at the hairpin it's a little bit bumpy bargy because Kvyat really tried to pinch me to the inside but I was having none of it I was on a charge like for the first time in a while I was on a proper proper charge going through spoon curve you guys can see the grip advantage and the aero and chassis advantage how we have built up this McLaren through the whole season we have a little bit of a tank slapper coming out of spoon curve but now behind Giovinazzi we've got overtake on the ERS as we head into 130R Alfa Romeo v McLaren through 130R flat out don't you dare lift through there head to the corner we have a very late break moment we, we keep we give Giovinazzi the space but we are ahead of him before he even needs the space Beautiful move there up the inside of Antonio Giovinazzi. Heading on to lap 11 now, guys. This is the Red Bull of... Is that Gasly or Hamilton? That is Gasly. Ah, Hamilton. Gasly or Vettel? That is Gasly, guys. Coming into the pit lane. And guys, at this stage of the race, it was clear to me that some drivers were going for the very, very audacious one-stop from softs to mediums. With these cars being in Season 3 and almost max upgraded, they are... They are good with tire wear, I'm not going to lie. But here we go, guys. It is now Lucas Weber v. Daniel Ricciardo. Lucas Weber go, pulls to the inside as we go up to 130R. The Renault it does not have the same engine as the Racing Point. And that's an easy move for Lucas Weber as we head through 130R. Now on to the, what's this, lap 13, guys. I think it's time to run through the top 10. It is Lucas Weber leading the way, but who still has to make a pit stop in P1. P2, it is Charles Leclerc going for a very audacious one-stop. P3, it is Pierre Gasly defending from myself in P4, who is also on a very aggressive two-stop strategy. Beautiful move there as we take P3 away from Pierre Gasly. But Gasly actually runs wide through the first corner. But that is just for me to say wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Sebastian Vettel is in the second Red Bull in P5. P6 is Max Verstappen, who started outside the top 10 thanks to a penalty. P7 is Valtteri Bottas. P8, Kevin Magnussen having a beautiful race for Renault. P9, it is Mr. Carlos Sides in my previous season world championship winning car, the Haas. And P10, it is Mr. Lewis Hamilton, who is battling away with Daniel Ricciardo. Guys, you guys can see this is actually... Who is this? It is myself once again, guys. I actually think I got... Oh, no, this is just a replay of me and Gasly. 
you guys see that there was a tidy bit of contact, but I don't think Beard Gasly made such hefty contact that he had to go completely off track. I left him more than enough space. And that was already very terrifying for myself because of all the first corner accidents that happened this race. But guys, it's time to come in for our second pit stop. We strap on a brand spanking new set of yellow walled medium tires. And we are now pushing towards the end of this Japanese Grand Prix. Let's see where we emerge. It is going to be behind Carlos Sainz who will take P8 away from us. Will we go out ahead of Lewis Hamilton? Pit limiter off. Complete. See these tires through to the end now. Guys, that is us now down to P10. So we're going to have a very, very big fist fight on our hands. But not just us. This man as well, Lucas Weber. And guys, the most important thing to me is nobody, absolutely nobody, is within the, this championship except myself and Lucas Weber. Nobody can win this championship except me or him. So my only goal was I didn't care who won the race. I just wanted to finish ahead of Lucas Weber so I could extend my championship lead, which took me 16 rounds to get after I was basically, I can't even remember at the beginning of the season, guys. It was almost like 100 points behind Weber. It was something nutty. Lucas Weber has played all his luck and momentum cards in the beginning of the season, and it looks like his luck has run out. Do you guys see that we overtook Lewis Hamilton at the, I think two laps later it is time to make the move on Mr. Carlos Sainz who is running the white walled hard tires which is an absolutely terrible tire at almost any track not all but almost every track. Did you guys see it through the little dip there at through the final corner we go here open up DRS there's nothing that that, that Sainz can do in the horse and that is us now up into P what's that P8. Here you guys can see, this is actually Max Verstappen, but is he fighting away? I think this is with Sebastian Vettel or Pierre Gasly, either one. Heading into 130, oh, there goes Max Verstappen. Beautiful move up the inside of the Red Bull there. I'm not sure which Red Bull that is. Um, it is Sebastian Vettel, guys. It is Mr. Seb Vettel. So Vettel got overtaken by the car that he won the first season in, and that uh, cannot feel good for the five-time world champion when you look at my career as well in real life. The four-time world champion. He tries to come back at Verstappen. And he gets to the... <laughs> Holy moly, Vettel. You've got a death wish, my friend. That was so, so close. Here you guys can see this is now Lucas Weber making a move on Mr. Valtteri Bottas in the Mercedes. That is him now up from P7 to P6. And he is now chasing after Kevin Magnussen in the banana yellow. Um, Peely of the F1 grid, the Renault. And here you guys can see this is now actually just coming to the end of that, that lap. It is actually Valtteri Bottas defending from myself, chasing hard because I saw Lucas Weber's name tag, guys. And it is as if I got tunnel vision. And ooh! Wow, wow, wow. That was... Ooh, ooh. Okay. That was um, hair, hair thickness of almost killing Mr. Valtteri Bottas. You guys can see I am in absolutely aggro mode for this Japanese Grand Prix. And as we make the move on Bottas, Weber makes the move on Kevin Magnussen. And now it is time for us to get to pull our finger from our rear. I never believe it was up there, but we still have to fight as hard as we can. We have to catch Weber before this race ends. Otherwise, we this championship is just going to get much harder. But we are being held up by Kevin Magnussen. And there's less than two laps to go. Coming down this next part, it is myself, V. Kevin Magnussen. Coming up the hill towards 130. Oh, you guys can see the McLaren is a beast in a straight line. This is, this is without DRS. No DRS on this upfield section at Suzuka. We get the move done. And now we've only got one lap to catch Mr. Lucas Weber. This is going to be a fight and a half. But uh, guys, as we start the final lap, Charles Leclerc is leading the way from PA Gasly and P2. Final lap. final lap of the race. We're leading our teammate by 15.0 seconds. Okay, thank you once again, Jeff. Um, it is Max Verstappen P3, Sebastian Vettel P4, Lucas Weber is in P5, myself P6. And you guys, we've got to stay on board for this lap. As you guys can see, I am pushing with everything I've got. We've got almost no fuel left. We've only, we've got to push the car to match with ERS modes. I don't care about anything now. I have to get onto the back of that Pink Panther with my Papaya Orange McLaren. As we head here, through this next part, into the kink. Drop a gear, seventh gear. Just throw the car in there. Third gear through the right hand as we go underneath the bridge. It is very close. You guys can see every single corner I'm gaining. But I don't believe it's going to be enough. As Charles Leclerc comes out of Spoon Curve all the way to, to head up all the way to 130R. Charles Leclerc has driven an absolutely brilliant race. He pulled off the one stop. And he has got to take a very, very famous win for Ferrari here in Japan. 
Pierre Gasly will take P2 for Red Bull and Max Verstappen had a beautiful comeback drive. He actually outdrove myself who also started way back on a one stop. Softs to mediums, Max Verstappen will take P3. But guys, are we close enough to Lucas Weber? Through 130, oh, you guys can see I'm so much closer than I was. We go purple middle sector, that's how hard we're pushing. Through the final corner, all I needed was one more lap. But it is not happening and we even oversteer out of the final corner just to show our disappointment. Alright, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Ferrari have really pulled it out of the bag today. It's a great win. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races. And we saw that today with our winner. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Despite the best efforts of our championship leader, that lead has taken a bit of a knock today. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. He was definitely my driver of choice. Let's move on to the constructors. Racing Point continue to run away with it out in front. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. What a Japanese Grand Prix, guys. The track where the AI are the most OP. We fight back from P9 to P6. Not the best drive in the world, but you guys can see that I drove the living heebie-jeebies out of this McLaren. I couldn't get any more pace out of this car. And all I needed was one more lap to get that McLaren on the back of Lucas Weber. But um, now, guys, the championship... It's it's tough. Commiserations on that result. It's been a tough weekend. You can say that again, Emma. You can say that again. Guys, tough weekend. We head into the final four rounds, which are Mexico, America, uh, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi. There's only 10 points in the championship, guys. Myself and Lucas Weber. We've still got a big amount of points to catch um, before we can catch racing points. So I'm going to need my teammate, Devin Butler, to help me out with that but guys 10 points is all there's in it 10 points i do not know how this championship is going to end guys but lucas weber i can guarantee you guys is going to bring his a game till the final checkered flag in abu dhabi and guys if i have to make a bold prediction i think for the first time in this channel's history i will not win the championship at Brazil. On F1 2018, we won the championship in Brazil. On this game, F1 2019, if you guys remember back to last season, we won in Brazil after an absolutely crazy, crazy race. If you're new to the channel, guys, go check out my first and second seasons of this career mode. Go check it out in the playlist. The playlist will make sure that the episodes are in the right order. And I trust me, you are going to enjoy it. It is non-stop action every single episode from episode one all the way through to where we are now. But guys, that has been this episode. And guys, I'm honestly telling you, my, my hiney is doing the pinch thing and it is not fun. We've got four rounds to go and there's 10 points in the championship between myself and Weber. There is still a full 104 points available this season. Remember, 25 points for a race victory. If you get past a slack, you get 26. 26 times 4, it's 104 points. It's gonna get nutty, guys. It's gonna get very nutty. And um, I'm not gonna lie, just as much as I'm stressing, I'm also looking forward to it because it's gonna be, it's gonna, the gloves are gonna come off, the, sh the shirts are gonna come off, it's gonna become a fist fight. And unlike in F2, where Devin Butler was my biggest rival, he is now my teammate and I'm gonna need his support. My biggest rival now is Lucas Weber. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for staying to the end. Like, share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media and, sub and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. All those fancy nifty things. You guys are amazing. Remember, if you share this video on Twitter or Instagram, tag me in the poster story and I will give you a shout out in a future video and on YouTube. Well, well and on my social media. But I'll see you all next time. Cheers!